Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto Tools and Time.com. Welcome back. Today in the shop we have this 2003 Honda S2000. Pretty sharp little car. And we'll be replacing the clutch. So let's get in there and we gotta pull this tranny. Gotta get started sometime. Alright, so where you start, I guess it's just a matter of preference. So. Uh, definitely cover up painted surfaces because that you can't fix very easily. So this has an aftermarket air cleaner on it. It's going to be a little different, most likely. But we have two bolts on this one. It looks like I could remove the whole assembly. Uh, I'm going to need a 10mm socket here and another one in here. It's in a spot where it's really hard to reach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Abracadabra. Aftermarket stuff, you know that? I'm not saying it's good or bad, it's just different. <laughs> and the other one I'll be removing is right down there. I don't need a wrench with that one because it has a nut. This hose. Let's clamp here. We gotta take it and slide it back. Need pair of cutting pliers. This one I'm gonna just. I'm just going to set that down there like so. Alright, on this, looks like they just have a zip tie holding this back in the hose, so we'll take a remove of that. Alright, this hose should come out now. This should come off. I look at that. The main reason I took the air cleaner and the tube off is because to get to the upper starter bolt, we're going to take and move the alternator out of our way a little bit. But we're also going to need to remove this exhaust manifold. Uh, to do that, we're going to have to remove this heat shield. There's one down here. Actually, there's three right here we can get to right now. This one, I'm going to need a shallow 10, Andy. The fourth one's way in the back. That's going to be the hard one to get to. For us. It's that very last one. It's going to be really hard to see it, but those are the ones we pulled out. We have one. Just loosen it up, just break it loose, and then you'll be able to slot it so it'll come out. Alright, that bottom one loose. I'm hoping. Wait a minute, that one slot it. I just don't know how to expect you to get that. Alright, so next we're gonna have to take and remove this heat shield. So it looks like a 12 millimeter. So after fiddling around, it seems the best path for this without bending stuff it's up through the front. So it looks like we have a bunch of 12 millimeters around the perimeter of. Alright, just gotta remember there's one that made it to the floor. It was all out. As you can see, she's loose. At this point, we'll go underneath and just take the exhaust down. All right, now that we're underneath the vehicle, I'm instead of pulling the exhaust apart right here at this two bolt flange, I think that's still gonna be in our way a little bit. So I'm gonna pull the three bolt flange apart in the back. Uh, we might have to replace that gasket most likely. Um, I'm gonna have to undo this oxygen sensor regardless because it's on the cross member and attached to the transmission harness. So we're gonna pop the clips here and up top and unplug it. Right here's the oxygen sensor plug. All right, for the upstream O2 sensor, you come around, you see you have another 
but make a little clip that we have to take off there. It's the white harness if we follow it all the way up. And another one up there on a bracket. Right there, we have to undo that one. And then we come around to the other side. And we'll unplug the harness right there. Right now we have the front upstream O2 disconnected, rear O2 disconnected. There's still a bracket up front that's going to hold it. Move the gas, get in the bow. And then we come back up here on the exhaust. We'll see if we have this, this bracket. I'm going to see if I can lead the bracket on the header and let's put this up here like so. Pull it down. Just fits. <laughs> Just fits. It's pretty heavy. All right, so next we gotta pull the drive shaft and I just put a mark. So I just put everything back together in case it was balanced as an assembly, but I don't know, it's just something I do. All right, I'm taking a six millimeter Allen. All right, this is All right next we're gonna go up here and see where I had the ratchet on the lower starter bolt. It's a 14 millimeter. And take and zip that out. All right, now we're gonna take the slave cylinder bolts out to 12 millimeters. After the slave cylinder is unbolted, pull it out. There's a boot here, you gotta take that out. And then this fork, you gotta uh, pull, it and pull it out towards you. And it comes unlatched like that. And I'll show you why once we get the tranny out. Next, while I'm down here, I'm gonna take, and take the four 10 millimeter bolts out of the boot. All right, next. I gotta get to the top starter bolt. So I'm gonna take the serpentine belt off and we're gonna flop the alternator out of the way. It's all in place, but another 14 as well. It's going to be really hard to see it, but I ended up taking the bottom bolt completely out. Just flopping it over and then you take a really long extension. You run it back with a swivel and a 14. Get that top bolt and a starter. And I'm just going to leave the extension there for now. Hopefully I could just leave everything in place for the rest of the job. Alright, so next we got to lower the subframe a little bit. So you got two bolts in the back. They're really long bolts. So those we're going to leave in for now. And then we have another one here. And one I took out already here. Remove this one. And this one. And the other four are long. And we're just going to drop it. I'm not sure if you can see how long that bolt is. Start lowering this up for and these back ones are just as long. Oh shoot, different size. These ones are 17 millimeter, the ones are 19. Lower about an inch. A little further. We don't really have to lower it anymore until we get the cross member off the back. Okay, now we're inside the vehicle. We gotta take a 14 wrench, break this nut loose, and then take off your shifter knob. Which is maybe breathing heavy. Got that. Alright, to pop this off, if get the backside started, don't pry it up too far, just get it popped. And just move up here and pop it a little more. And you pull it up and then you'll have your two plugs. You're gonna simply push on the back side of this one. And, uh, same thing with this one. I'm just gonna spin it off to the side. Next we gotta take and remove this boot. I'm gonna need a flathead screwdriver. Let's take this out for a minute. If I can. Look for the ones with the little arrows and I think there's four of them 
Oh yeah, four of them. And on this side of the boot, we're going to pry them up like that. Like that. You're not going to poke through the boot. You're simply just going to get underneath it. So, all right. Next, we have that little black plastic boot. You see how you have the three circles on it. We gotta pop that up and spin it to get to the bowl heads. There's three of them. Pop this up. And you got one, two, three. To be able to pull the shifter up and out, just like so. Remove the shifter and the spring. It's gonna be greasy, so. Now, now that the shifter's out, I'm going to take and remove three retaining bolts on this cross member. Now it's going to drop, so we got to be a little careful. It's not going to go crazy far. Just everything's floating on the two motor mounts. But next we're going to take and lower the subframe a little bit. Like I mentioned before, we have the two center ones removed. They're short. These four are long. So we're going to take and go down about an inch at a time. These ones are 19 in the front, 17 in the back. Now be careful, you don't want to take them all the way out at this point. Now you see how long they are. I'm not sure how much you got to work with. You got that much to work with. Next, just unplug the harness. It's pretty straightforward. It's got a couple little retaining clips that go into the brackets. You should be able to figure that out. It's those pinch style. You squeeze them and, and pull them out. And then uh, the bell bolts hold the, the bracket on it, hold the rest of the harness so you don't have to unclip them. But now we can just start pulling the bell bolts. We got one here, one up there behind that bracket, as you see. These ones here will have to use a long extension. Got one, two, same thing over here. You got, so you got one on the far side, and one, two. Three, four, I think there's eight total. I'll find out. So I'm going to pull these bottom ones, get the top ones out, leave one in, and then I'll put the camera back on. We also have this one here, and this one here. So we had the flywheel resurfaced. So that's done. You see the old pressure plate. I know I'm a little hit and miss on this clutch job, but you guys are getting a general gift of the situation. You can see how hot it got. 
Got some hot spots or some hot spots on the flywheel as well. In order for this to be cut, we had to knock the pilot bearing out. We're going to be putting a new pilot bearing in it anyhow. Um, this is the old one. I think it's knocked in from this side. So I pretty much just essentially found a socket that fit it since we're getting replaced. I didn't uh, take too much care, but it came right out. This is the new one. We're using all genuine OEM Honda parts. Essentially, I find a socket that fits the outer race perfect and still fits in. This gets knocked completely in. You want to hit the outer race, you do not want to hammer against the inner race. You don't really have much of a choice when you're taking it out, but again, that difference in the sound. All right. One more thing I want to cover. Wipe all this down with um, alcohol or something, some kind of cleaner to take the packing material off it that you know keeps it from rusting. Um, this throw out baron gets installed a little differently than a traditional setup. This one gets put in from the inside. So once you put this up, and if you forget that throw out burn, you're gonna be uh, taking it back apart. So, don't forget to put that in first. Clutch disc. Uh, this bigger portion is gonna face out. The flat side is gonna face towards the flywheel. So it's gonna go like this. If you put it like this, you're gonna have some trouble. Just like so. There's no way to get that back in unless you put it in first. Right, Andy, you wanna clean this for me while I put the flywheel up? All right, I'm going to use a little blue Loctite. Each head holds. I figured the reassembly is going to be more important. So I'll try to capture as many details as possible. You see I have a mark down here. Um, I also marked the flywheel. So I have not moved the crank. Make sure Mark lines up. If we were off a of bolt in either direction, you you would see it for sure. I'm just going to run it down with my little impact gun, and then we'll torque it. See, I'm going. Once I get him pretty much ran down, I could just go right around. Him. So this will be the tool I'll be using to keep the flywheel from spinning. Okay, I know the sun's shining behind me. It kind of sucks. Keeps, uh, all right, I think you can see what we're doing. This will hold the flywheel from spinning. We're going to torque it to 94 foot-pounds. At this 
quite active. Let's go around. Definitely do not want these to come loose. All right, so now we're ready to install the clutch and the pressure plate. Feel that pilot barrel one more time. Make sure everything feels good. Um, you need the special alignment tool. We're gonna install that into the clutch like so. 